Good evening, everyone, as we welcome you inside the Tower Grill on the campus of Arizona Christian University for the inaugural The Storm Report as we talk ACU football tonight and we talk a lot of other things around Arizona Christian University athletic-wise on the Storm Report. But tonight we're going to begin with talking football as ACU began their eighth season in the program's history with a victory and an impressive 33-9 win. We'll talk with head coach Jeff Bowen here in just a moment. He's actually on set with us. My co-host for our program throughout the entire season will be Ed Cole. Ed, my man, my broadcast partner for six years now. Welcome to the show, Ed. Kevin, thanks for having me. It's been a great 48 hours since we had a great victory just a Stones throw away from here at the Tower Grill. Right here at Firestorm Field, 33 to 9. ACU wins it. They beat uh, Lincoln University, an inaugural program. And, Coach, for you, uh, congratulations on the win. And uh, the first thing we're going to start off with, uh, we were talking about some of the great numbers that we had for our viewership. And one of the things that you mentioned uh, to the fellows here on the table, you said that you've heard nothing but great things about the broadcast. And I was just curious, were, were you expecting to hear uh, anything other than that? <laughs> No, not really, but just the fact that we've added some uh, some features and stuff like replay and stuff like that and some graphics. Uh, everyone I talked to said it was a, a real high-quality uh, production, and they really enjoyed watching the game. Well, we certainly appreciate that. James K is responsible for that and, and a whole lot of uh, uh, student-athletes here uh, on campus for AC. So a lot of people uh, went into the success of that. So we thank you, Coach. Just having some fun yeah. with you. Um, Coach, congratulations again on the win. Uh, your only non-conference uh, opponent on the schedule. You guys uh, beat them handily here at home, 33-9. Uh, to 9. Your thoughts initially on the first victory? Well, it was a good way to start the season. You always want to start with a win. and. Uh, we all know how NAI football is. It's very competitive, and uh, you want to start out the season well. And uh, when you play 10 games, they're all important. So to get the win, and the guys uh, performed well in all three phases, um, we got some stuff we need to clean up because we want to be as good as we possibly can be, but we were pleased with the efforts. One of the great things about getting that kind of a victory here in the first week of the season is that you were able to play a lot of different players. I thought we played three different quarterbacks at one point. Uh, again, for the first game of the season, uh, that was a nice uh, part of the game that you were able to get so many guys involved early and often. Yeah, uh, I didn't get the total number of participation, but uh, I know we played a boatload of kids. We cleared the two deep for sure, and uh, we definitely went into three deep, uh, getting guys reps. Um, a lot of new members of our program got on the field for the first time, and then some of our veterans that uh, got their first time on the field with the varsity and, uh, you know, couldn't be happier. I was pleased with their performance and their ability to produce. And that's what it's about. You mentioned some of those veterans. And uh, one of the uh, the newest members of the football team, Martin Rodriguez, what a debut for him. First player of the game, uh, it was a sack. And uh, it was going to be the first of two, maybe three for Martin Rodriguez. But just a freshman, um, wow, hallelujah, another great recruit. But uh, you guys start the game off the, the white ray. Yeah, um, Rodriguez did a great job. I mean, he uh, played well. Um, uh, you know, we got some sacks, some tackles for losses, controlling his gaps and, and such, and, uh, and he's a true freshman. So, um, you know, he had big shoes to fill, you know, with, uh, with Desmond Dean um, graduating, and uh, he, he had a great performance his first night out. Coach, what a phenomenal effort from the entire defense. 54 plays, Lincoln ran for less than 200 yards. They held him to 43 yards of offense in the second half. It was 9-9 nine nine at one point, and then all of a sudden, the firestorm ran off a 24-point run and shut them out the rest of the game. Just talk about your defense and, and how dominant they were just 48 hours ago. Yeah, they just settled in, you know, and uh, that's a key. I mean, everyone's nervous the first night out and stuff, but uh, they played well in the first half, but once they got locked in to – to what we were expecting to see or hoping to see. You got to remember, this was a first year program playing their first game, so we had no film, really didn't know what they were going to do, so we prepared for base stuff. And the coaching staff did a great job of making some adjustments to the little things they were trying to do because they had film on us. But once we settled in, our, our guys controlled the, controlled the game the rest of the way. 
It's amazing. Uh, we three were on the field, and you were uh, before the game, and you were kind of a little bit, kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit of a trepidation with this. You're like, this is a little bit, this is kind of a twitchy situation because, as you mentioned, you don't know this football team, but as you mentioned, they know you, and you're trying to get a feel for this program. But it, it all came together in the end. It, it didn't start off. We we all knew it was going to be kind of a slow start with brand new season, trying to get a feel for a, a new football team, and everybody trying to feel each other out. But was it just a process of that feeling out, and then all of a sudden the firestorm took over once they got to feel for themselves and they made the proper adjustments in game in that halftime because they play play much stronger in the second half you know um we feel good about our team um how good our team ends up by the end of the season well it's a long journey and we'll see um how good we become we think we can be very good but it was the unknown you know and uh and once our kids settled in and, and, and coaches made a few adjustments, that was really about it. I mean, there was no major adjustments at halftime, some little tweaks and, and, and stuff on the on the defense uh, and offense. We just settled in and, and did what we, we like to do, play fast and, and uh, you know, uh, mix it up, run and pass. And, and uh, Tyler did a nice job of distributing the ball around to different, different people. So... Uh, uh, we we're pleased with the whole thing, but yeah, I was a little edgy just because we didn't. It wasn't about edgy about us. It was edgy because I just didn't know what they were going to be. And certainly, there would be some expectation of unknowing, you know, not knowing what they're going to do without any film on them. Uh, but uh, we knew they were going to come in and be athletic. They're going to be well coached. They've got, uh, you know, a strong coaching staff. So we knew that they were going to be a team that was going to be prepared in this first game. But uh, as we just mentioned here before we began the show, when ACU takes care of ACU's business and you guys just coach your own and worry about what you guys do, I think the results will be there for you in the long run. But you mentioned Tyler Duncan. Tyler Duncan will be one of our guests here momentarily. Jacob Hernandez also here in studio. We'll see Jake here in just a moment as well, but uh, back to your defense for uh, just a moment. When the front seven does what they're supposed to do, and we theoretically say what they're supposed to do, uh, the other team practices all week as well, but uh, they did a great job. You mentioned some of the guys already, but we were talking about Martin Rodriguez, and, and then you think about uh, Dante Sewell. He played late in that ball game, but just great pressure up front. Uh, a new captain, and Stephon Peters going back to linebackers, but it was going to be the test was going to be, how would your secondary uh, fare in this one with some new kids playing? Antonio Horson had played a lot last year, but uh, he also got a start with Deion Horton, but I thought your cornerbacks answered the challenge when they were tested yeah both uh both antonio and, and Dion played well and so did the guys coming off the, the bench um safety play was solid um riley tucker does a pretty pretty good job for you out there huh <laughs> riley yeah, he's does pretty good a, among others he does a good job and and we played a uh, played a bunch of guys in the secondary and um you know i don't they threw for less than 100 yards so uh, part of that is quality pressure up front, and then our guys were doing a pretty good job covering on the back end, and and uh, that's what all all you want. So sometimes you get too complicated. This is this is football. It still comes down to, especially on the defensive side, I say it over and over again: alignment, assignment, and then just run like heck to the football, and things take care of itself. You know, don't give up big plays, and and you'll be in a lot of games. You're watching the Storm Report. Talking ACU football here from the Tower Grill on the campus of Arizona Christian University. Kevin Derryberry with Ed Cole, Jeff Bowen, our guest right here. Uh, Coach Bowen, you mentioned the three phases of the game. I thought Sean Bailey punting the football uh, at home again, 43-yard average, uh, one inside the 20. He just really set the tone for you when you t started talking about field position and flipping the field. He did a great job on special teams for you. Probably the best game Sean's played as a, as a firestorm. He did a really good job. Uh, he handled handled a couple rough snaps. Uh, his average he was did. good, and just as important as as the average, you can kick the ball a mile, but if you hang it down the middle of the field, they're going to run it back a half mile. Uh, I'm, I don't want that. So he did a really good job of putting the ball directionally where we wanted it, so we could cover things. And uh, yeah, it was definitely his best game as our, our punter. Of course, Nestor doing Nestor things. He's banging a couple field goals. Uh, yeah. Again, a new long snapper there. I think uh, we want to credit uh, Blade Stubbs. Did a nice job of getting the ball back there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, all three faces. Coach did a great job. And, and of course, it was nice to have uh, the franchise. Tyler Duncan back, taking the snaps. Shea Morales, an admirable job last year. But here again in this game, you got to play three quarterbacks. Uh, that's just good for your for the morale of your football team. It's uh, And we don't just play them to play them. I mean, if a kid can't play, he ain't going to hit the field. I mean, that's just the reality. This is college football. Uh, but we got, uh, in that quarterback room, we got some really solid performers. Um, it's great having Tyler back. Um, he, he does the little things, 
you know, he's got the it factor with, with being able to do some different things because of his athletic ability. But as you saw, Shea, Shea hasn't missed a beat. He went in there, took us down the field, scored, bang, you know, five for six. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased with that, that the quarterback play. Um, and it's only going to get better. And then you bring – uh, Quentin Commons off the uh, off the bench as our third quarterback mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of uh, Fullerton. Uh, there's a lot of people that would like to have their, that young man as their starter. A D1 bounce back right here. He's the third quarterback on your roster right now, but uh, uh, he's got a chance to play at some point. Oh, he's, he's talented. Yeah. He's talented, and he's going to be in the mix. And and uh, it's nice to have that problem, trying to figure out how you're going to get snaps to these guys when they're that talented. And that's really a testament to, to you and your staff, what you've done the last couple of years recruiting rise. We talked about that on the broadcast, just the numbers, the body count, almost 180 players right now. And a lot of them got the suit up, maybe maybe 80 plus players suited up and got to play yesterday or Sunday, excuse me, on Saturday, if you will. But uh, yeah, that's just a, a good thing to, to, to be working with with that program is to have that body count. Yeah, well, I'll be honest with you. We, we our returners, have, have done a great job with the leadership and and wanting to take the program to the next level. We did. We achieved so much last year, a lot of firsts, a lot of accolades, but we're not happy, you know, with just being there. We want to take it to the next level. And so our, our, our returners have done a great job of that. And I tell you, the staff did a phenomenal job this off season uh, recruiting. Uh, Coach Sean Cooper, our recruiting coordinator, and the, and the guys just worked their tails off. And they, they really brought in some talent and – and that's what you want. If you can bring in talent and they can compete, it's going to make uh, every position better, and we definitely have that going on right now. And, Coach, I would imagine going 9-2, and two, winning the sack, and having the playoff game against Kaiser, all that really played well positively toward the recruiting and bringing in almost 200 players. Oh, sure. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be here? I mean, Arizona's great weather. You're wearing shorts in December. You never have to shovel snow. <laughs> you know, you, you, it's an amazing campus with a great communi uh, community. Um, you know, our, our programs, our academics is phenomenal. Tops in the state, according to, you know, U.S. World News Report and all these accolades. And, oh, yeah, we play really good football here. You know, and uh, we want to continue to grow that and we want to be able to compete at a national level on a consistent basis. And, um, you know, st student athletes are attracted to that because they can get it all. And then you throw in the component of our commitment to faith and, and their growth uh, in their faith. Um, a lot of a lot of young men, believe it or not, are really attracted to that part of what we do and how we incorporate it into our program. Outstanding. Head coach Jeff Bowen, the Sooner Athletic Conference Coach of the Year one year ago, 38 and 15, Coach. You're 1 and 0 in 2021. Congratulations on the nice start, and we thank you for being our guest here on the Storm Report, the first ever edition of the Storm Report right here for the Tower Grill. And uh, now we get to turn things over to the man we call TD. There you go, Tyler Duncan. Well, thanks, Jay, guys. Appreciate thanks it. for being on the show. Thank you, Coach. It's going to be fun. You bet. Appreciate we'll it. take yes, a quick break, pay a couple bills, and uh, when we come back, Tyler Duncan will join us on the hot seat, if you will. Around here. We welcome you back inside the Tower Grill on the campus of Arizona Christian University. The number 15 team of the country picks up the victory on Saturday in the first game of the season, 33 to 9, the victory over Lincoln University. They took out the Oaklanders, and now joining us on the program is the Sooner Athletic Conference Player of the Week for Week Number One is Tyler Duncan, your quarterback for ACU. And First and foremost, Tyler, we want to get to your health and find out how you're feeling, but if you played in five weeks in the Sooner Athletic Conference, in your last five weeks you played, you've won the award four times. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. You bet. Uh, just, it's not me. It's, uh, it's the people around me, honestly. Uh, I have a great coaching staff, um, great teammates supporting me, um, and it really makes my job easy. Um, when things go hard, um, I, make, I make plays and they make plays, so... Um, 
it's a whole team team thing. It's not just me. No question about that. Humble guy right here. But you have you are uh, taking the snaps and you're making the throws, so uh, you're looking pretty good doing it. 267 through the air this past week, three touchdowns, two picks. And just you know, we we want to start back the first question. Let's just ask you about your health. You looked great out there. How are you feeling with that off season and how challenging was that to watch your team go to the national championship series and you were you were still kind of holding that clip or just coaching at that point? It was definitely hard. Um, I wish I could have been out there. Um, I went through a lot this past year, and just to break my collarbone, added on to it. Um, I'm glad we made it that far. Um, I was happy. I was excited. Um, yeah, I was bummed that I had to hold the clipboard and and coach, but it, all, it honestly brought me a lot of uh, viewpoints from a different perspective, mm-hmm. and I got to see plays and the game from a different um, level and a coaching perspective, and actually – what goes into what uh, Coach Bowen does and what Coach Crux sees and everything that they that they harp on us and that they bring to us, I could I got to see that from a field um, coaching level. Tyler, what was that transition like? Moving, like you said, to to being a clipboard to being an assistant coach of of sorts to be able to, to coach up Shea and get him ready game after game, especially once we got to. West Palm Beach, Florida against Kaiser. Once we got into that really, really pressure type situation where it's like you win or go home, how, was that tough for you to to make that move over and, and say, okay, this is this is my lot in life right now. At least for this time being, I'm going to go ahead and coach up Shea and make he, make sure he's ready week after week, the uh, the best way that I can get him ready. Yeah, um, honestly, he pushes me and I push him. So um, yeah, it was super hard, but I had to. Uh, I could either sit down and complain about the the circumstance I was in and feel bad for myself, or I could uh, do the things that I could to be better and a better person and a better teammate. I'm a better brother uh, to be there for him and help him through everything, and I really helped the team. Um, I helped him and the team, and I think we did good. Yeah, you did good. I think so. We mentioned that four out of five times uh, you win the, the honors. And, uh, you know, Nestor Higuera was a runner-up for the award this week. Martin Rodriguez uh, won it on the defensive side. So uh, a lot of great things are happening here at ACU football. And, uh, you know, it, it was challenging for you, certainly. But uh, you, you took uh, that negative, turned it into a positive. I think you've c- come into camp here in the best shape of your life. Uh, you, you're clean cut. You, 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 you shave the locks a little bit, which i got to <laughs> ask you. Um, when we were talking on the plane uh, with all the Fellas, uh, just having fun with Cole Davis and Ryan Vanderwerf and Luke Verbalitis and, and others, uh, Derek Quint. Uh, but uh, the uh, excuse me, Derek Anderson. Derek Anderson. We, yep. we were we were talking uh, just fun stuff, and I said, "All right, who does well with the ladies?" And everybody <laughs> pointed to you. You're over there at the window, listening to your music. It's kind of just chilling. And well, it, it's got to be the long locks, man. It's got to be the hair. Co-op was doing the same thing. So uh, we just had some fun with you right there. But they all said, it's Tyler Duncan. He does well with the ladies. And uh, look at that dude. And he's the quarterback. So uh, you got a lot going for you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, we both cut it at the same time. We It was getting long and getting too much to handle. So we decided to cut it. Of course, we're talking about Zach Cullop. He's a wide receiver. He's out of Cactus High School. Zach didn't play in that first game. He's a little bit banged up, but Zach is a new father that you pointed that out to us. So congratulations to Zach Kelp uh, on fatherhood. Uh, that's pretty cool. But, uh, uh, you know, we, when you look back at your game uh, after having that layoff for you, how did you think you played this first week? I think I did good. Um, there's obviously a lot of room for improvement. I wasn't happy with the two interceptions, and I forced a lot. Um, and like Coach Bowen says, don't try to be a superhero. Just just hand the ball off and, and take the things that they give us. So. There's a lot to improve on, and um, I'm excited to go move forward. I'm just going to say one, two words here. John Cole, what's it like having that kind of guy to target uh, a few times a game? In three quarters of football, he had 11 catches, over 100-something uh, yards. He was just special. Once 127, yeah. Uh, it makes things a, a lot easier. Um, every day during uh, for summer, me and John would go out to the field and throw, and uh, we push each other. We were on each other to, to, get, to get to weights, to go work out, and – uh, he's doing better with going to weights. He's only mi- he only missed one, so that's improvement from last season where he would miss two a week when we would only have two. So uh, we're happy to have him back, and, and he's doing good. Tyler, to go along with seven, you got number one, MJ Harris, the brand new, the the young puppy that came in, and he really showed out on Saturday. Four for 86, you hit him for that 62-yard touchdown pass. What would you see from MJ, and h- how are you building that relationship with him in such a short time? They make everything. He makes it easy, too. Um, uh, as soon as Bowen texted me that he was coming, I texted him, and we went through that same day. Um, and we just got the timing down two times a week, and we would just go and throw. And and uh, 
it all paid off, and it's all it's all here now. And a lot of time they they talk about bookend uh, defensive ends. You get some bookend wide receivers right there with MJ on one side, and of course you've got uh, Johnny Cole on the other side. But then you take it to the slot. Malik Patterson a nice touchdown reception, great play. Uh, that was fantastic. And then if you could break it down for us, I'm not sure if we had that highlight available, but uh, uh, it was uh, it was the May Day play, kind of a fire drill. I think we were going for it on fourth down. Uh, Coach B rolling the dice once again, right near the 50-yard line. Uh, the snap was a little bit low. You corralled it. Uh, you were able to get up, step inside that pocket, and and uh, throw the ball down the field. He spotted Harris, and then he took it the rest. Uh, take us through uh, your brain and your mind what was happening on that particular sequence, because that was uh, a fire drill, to say the least. Well, it was fourth and eight. Uh, I wasn't going to snap it he didn't know i was going to call a timeout if it didn't work um i didn't even know what he really called he just called <laughs> alaska so uh, it's a freeze count so went went shotgun called it and they didn't jump off sides so i was like well it's fourth and eight you shouldn't jump off sides if i go for a qb keep with eight yards left so <laughs> i went shouldn't. under there and he moved his hand and ryan snapped the ball and i didn't know he snapped it saw it on the ground i flicked it back and just ran around and peeked up and I saw MJ just hanging over there and I just threw it and then we scored and everyone was going crazy. So. Just exactly like you drew it up in the sand, <laughs> as we like to say. But yep. the, it was a heck of a play. The presence there, you got to love it. The, the, the play call, too, and the fact that we find out now right here, the reveal on the show, we weren't even sure what was supposed to happen on that one. But you always like the result, Coach. A touchdown, that works pretty good. <laughs> He's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters, you, as long as you get six. Tyler, um, I'm, I'm looking at the numbers, zero sacks for you or Shea. How great is it to have an offensive line that, that is that strong? That you've got a wall right there, a steel wall that will not let defenses get to you. They're very protective. And, and, to, and to go along with your legs and your ability to escape the, the, escape the pressure. They're very smart, and they know they know who they have to pick up, and they give me all the time I need. And if one person misses a block, then I make, make a play, and then the next play they have my back and, and will block for me. So – I'm blessed to have them, and me and Shay are blessed to have a great line to protect us in the running backs. And really a credit to Coach Nelson. Uh, Nelly does a great job. Jacoby Sims got that start. We were uh, missing Jesus Reyna. He'll be back here in a couple weeks. But, uh, you know, Caleb uh, Merriman, he also got his first start here at the NAI level. He played very well. And then, you know, the captain up, up front there with Ryan Vanderwerf. Uh, what's the chemistry like w working with your center a little bit? Me and Ryan are good friends. We're we're real close. <laughs> we're really close. He's laughing because he knows. But we hang out on weekends. We hung out yesterday for my birthday, and and yeah, we're really close, and we have a good connection. Tyler Duncan, 21 years of age now, huh? Yes, sir. Congratulations yes, sir. to you. Yeah. Happy belated birthday. You get to uh, celebrate with your team, your coaches. Uh, you're 1-0 now, uh, the 15th team in the country. Maybe on the way up. I haven't seen the most recent up-to-date poll, but uh, not that that matters or anything. But uh, congratulations to you uh, on the start of your season and uh, your career so far here. Thank you. You bet. Tyler Thank Duncan, you. our you, guest Tyler. on the Storm Report. And let's talk a little D. Let's take a quick break, and let's talk some defense with Jacob Hernandez straight ahead on the program on the Storm Report right here from the Tower Grill on Arizona Christian University's campus. We welcome you back inside the Tower Grill for the Storm Report, talking ACU football here as the Firestorm take care of business. They de defeat Lincoln 33-9. It was a convincing win on all three phases of the game. And now uh, we're going to talk a little defense. 
and it's Jacob Hernandez, the pride of Marco Staniza, played for Roy Lopez back in the day. And, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just I'm a truth teller. And uh, they just asked Jacob to change his wardrobe for the program, so they asked him to remove his hat. I uh, will talk about that later. It was an L.A. Dodger hat. I oh. thought it was a pretty good look, and that palm tree on there is a nice yeah, look for Jacob. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like they like they would have liked the winning team. You yeah, know, so. you know, well, I want some respect for the blue, <laughs> huh? But uh, joke, uh, Jacob. Uh, all kidding yeah. aside, congratulations to you on your your success and uh, another nine tackle performance, uh, building on last year's uh, season where you had 72 tackles to lead your team. Congratulations. How are you feeling after the first victory? Um, to be honest, I'm feeling pretty good after it. Um, there's a lot of things we got to pick up on the defensive side, especially with regards to the running game. I didn't really like how much they ran for on us. But other than that, we were pretty much disciplined. We were really good in our alignments and our assignments. Jacob, Mike Green, 12 rushes for 63 yards. He was a bruiser. What did you, what did you see from 28? Oh, man, he was, a, he was a hard runner, very patient, followed his blocks very well. It was just I knew it was it was going to be those type of games like like Ottawa and stuff like that with the way he ran. So, I mean, he was a tough guy. That's all I really got to say about him. He's pretty good. Jacob, you had to play with that club on your hand uh, late in the season last year. You were able to kind of fight through that and then play uh, with that injury. Uh, how are you feeling now? Oh, man, it's like it's brand new, honestly. It's it feels like I don't have a big old club or like I feel like I don't feel like Hellboy no more if you guys ever seen the movie Hellboy mm -hmm. okay. so I was able to move around get my hands loose and you didn't see Hellboy I missed that one Hellboy oh. is great oh it's a great movie I'll have to check it out gotta check it out uh, okay so Jacob so now the club is going the word on the street is you want to get 150 tackles this season oh yes sir how I'm are you going to do that I'm aiming for that mark um, I mean it starts with the the D line honestly that those guys are the ones that really allow me to free to make those tackles make those type of plays just because they're doing their assignments they're blocking their hole or they're guarding their holes or doing whatever they need to do to basically make it happen, make me free, basically. Always works together, right? you got to love that, uh, how they work uh, in tandem. Uh, Jacob, Stephon Peters, tank we like to call him, number six, uh, uh, anointed a team captain by the players, uh, gets a chance to start with you. Uh, what's it like playing side-by-side -side with tank number six? You guys have a pretty good rapport. Oh, together. man, honestly, that's, that's, that's my brother. It's, it's like playing with like my brother. Like I said, he's... He knows what I'm. He knows what I'm gonna do. I know what he's gonna do. We talk pre-play. Um, we just look at each other, and it's we already know what's gonna happen. So, it's it's very it's a very it's a blessing to play with Tank. What was like uh, watching number 99, Martin Rodriguez, make his debut as a freshman, getting after the quarterback like he was? Um, to be honest, going into that game, I was kind of nervous, especially because we did have those two starting freshmen. But as soon as I saw them step in, it was like they played like they've been here before which I really like, that the fact that they came out and they did what they had to do and they, they made plays, they went out, they took those risks that they wanted to do to make those plays. So they played like veterans out there, which was really helpful towards Outstanding. us. Outstanding. Jacob, when I look, I I'm, a, I'm a numbers guy. I look at these numbers, the entire, the, the entire uh, numbers of, sacks, of, of tackles, 57 uh, tackles as a team, 40 of them were solo. I like that, that the fact that, is that because you, this, defense is so, this defense is so disciplined and everybody plays their assignments right, that everybody can get all those solo tackles and nobody over pursues or nobody just, nobody really makes any, uh, very few mistakes from a defensive standpoint when it comes to making those one-on-one -on -one tackles, those 50-50 those tackles. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, like you were saying, the team, the defense, especially now, is we're very, very disciplined. We we try to incorporate that in our everyday, everyday drills, um, everyday practice schemes. What also helped was our pursuit to the ball too. The fact that we were all getting to the ball, like we were talking, we were seeing in the uh, meeting before this, that whenever you stop a play, there's at least ten to nine defensive players on the ball at all times. Jacob, when you uh, look at the coaches, you get to learn from uh, Coach Bowen leading the way, but you get, uh, get to also uh, be led by Keith Sewell, our defensive coordinator. What's it like uh, playing under the direction and leadership of Coach Sewell? Oh, man, it's, uh, it's lovely playing with Sewell. He lets we know me he's a character. We know all <laughs> that. But what's it like when, it, you know, I've seen him get after some players in practice. Yeah. And uh, he, he's another one of those guys who will, will make everybody and hold everybody accountable. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the thing about that's what makes our defense good, honestly. He's the one that puts in those schemes. He's the one that makes us accountable. He's the one that makes us disciplined. He makes the one, he makes us fly to the ball. It's playing with it's we play. Um, I would say we play free when whenever we play with so That's how I could describe it. So. It's it's very a blessing. It's a blessing to have him on our side. And Jacob, as great as it is to have Coach Sewell as as your leader, every man 
on this football team has to look at themselves in the mirror and be accountable to themselves before they even step on they even step on the football field. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, we we go through it every day. We talk about it every day as a team that we we really want to change the culture of ACU. We really want to change the culture of these the the people on this campus and the football players especially. And just the fact that we have these the great coaching staff led by faith um, that follow God first is just amazing. And it's just it's really inspiring to look up to the, to really try to incorporate that in our lives. Going back to the, the 150 tackle goal, I mean, that is that is a tremendous goal. At some point along the line, uh, you start off with nine tackles. You're going to have to have yourself a 15 to 20 tackle kind of game. I do believe that your first ever game against Montana State Northern under, uh, under the lights against the Northern Lights, 13 tackles for you in that one. Uh, you've got it in there. You've yes, got sir. that motor, no doubt about oh, it. Oh, yes, sir. I'm, I'm, man, I'm planning on hitting on it. I'm really gonna. I'm really gonna try to get it this year. I keep telling Coach Will, Coach Sewell, leave me in, even though we're up. But I, it's. <laughs> why do you I'm think? Uh, why do you think they give you so much business about your baseball team? I, I can't understand that. I, I, that's what I was the trying haters? to figure out. Yeah, the that's haters? what. That's what I think. But yeah. I, you know, I, I normally can't hear them. So. So, you know, I just like to stay with Too that. much influence from Aiden Quinn. He's a San Francisco giant, oh, thick and thick, man. and uh, through and through all that <laughs> stuff. And that's probably where some of this comes from. Unless JB is a Diamondback fan, just won't share that with us here. Oh, but, we, uh, we can't have those here. We can't have no Diamondback fans here. I'm sorry about that. Mm. <laughs> Jacob, uh, when you look towards uh, next week, we got uh, Texas Wesley and a team that uh, the program is 3-1 and one against. You get a, your first road game of the season. Uh, last time we faced those guys, uh, they dogged us a little bit here on, in our barn on our field, the inaugural game at Firestorm Field. Uh, we all forgot about it, but eight turnovers. I'll just throw that up there. And then uh, a block punt. We owe those guys, and I say we collectively. Really, it's you and, and Ed and I are going to watch the game uh, together. But uh, I think you guys kind of you have something special for oh, Texas yeah, we're next um, week. They're, they're a really good team. They came out that last time. They came out physical. They hit us in the mouth, and we weren't really expecting that we – we're kind of on, on our uh, little high horse, and our heads got a little bit too big. And they came out, smacked us, and, I mean, you saw the result. So, I mean, this going into this game, it's just the same idea where instead of they coming out to smack us, we're going to go and smack them. We've got to so. stop the run a little bit, Coach. I'm picking Ty Williams. Yeah, he, stop he, Ty Williams. He did a number on us, and yes, uh, that's one of those things that uh, you have to kind of just uh, pull up the bootstraps, bulk up the chin strap, and get after it. Huh? Oh, yes, sir. It's going to be – that game is going to be a gritty game, but it's going to be a fun game. Those are the best games I enjoy. Jacob, how excited are you to start this sack play, knowing we've got a run of nine, and hopefully that'll run toward another a plane trip somewhere else come playoff time? Oh man, I'm, I'm, I've been looking forward to this ever since that that zero, that four zeros on the buzzer in Kaiser. That's all that's been on my mind. That's been on the team's mind ever since we finished that. So, uh, how going into the sack, I hope we just dominate, just dominate overall. My last one for you, kind of a, uh, a, a piggy up on, on the last question. Um, it, it was playing and watching uh, Martin Rodriguez, but uh, playing behind Jake Farrell in this case yesterday, Maurice Powell, the freshman of the year in the Sooner Athletic Conference, and then uh, Santan Smith, you got the start yesterday, but you see Dante Sewell over there, and then you also see uh, a new captain, another one, that's Jalen Mitchell. Oh, uh, yes, he too got after the quarterback yesterday. What's it like playing behind those guys? Oh, Deontay man. Dean as well. It's, it's like, <laughs> they're like my little protectors like they when I say they take over they then they take over the game like they dictate basically how that game's going to go that front seven or who that the, that box that dictates when whether we are going to win or lose good stuff Jacob Hernandez the pride of Marcos Daniza and now the pride of Arizona Christian University Ed what do you got for Jacob so we wrap things up. Hey, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm proud of you, brother. Congratulations, and go get them in Fort Worth. <laughs> yes, sir. Go out there, get that first sack win. Yes, sir. Is that going to be a bus ride or a plane ride for that one? We're going to bus it. Plane oh, ride, right. coach? Man, that's the other, the longest one. Bus it. That's all right. <laughs> you be prepared, and uh, you do a lot of soul searching bus on it those to Fort ones. Worth. Congratulations. Please pass along to all of your, uh, your, uh, your teammates, and thank you for being a guest on the Storm Report. And okay. uh, we look forward to talking with you later in the season. Thank you. Appreciate you for having me. Appreciate Jacob it. Hernandez, our thank guest you, on the Storm Report. For all of our outstanding guests here, for Tyler Duncan, head coach Jeff Bowen, and for our technical producer, Mr. Tim Gosen, we appreciate everybody here. Robert Nielsen, welcome aboard. Uh, this uh, show can be watched on the GSAC Sports Network. Dot com forward slash Arizona Christian. Special thank you to Keith Sewell, uh, Ben Harris, Nelly, Talent Duncan, JP. For my co-host, Ed Cole, I'm Kevin Derryberry. Until next week, have a great week and roll storm. Roll storm. Roll storm.